So here's what we're gonna do. It's nice out. I'm gonna get the uh, anaconda story out. <coughs> okay. The, ana the anaconda story. All right, so I went up to, uh, I took orders down to Panama in 87, da 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 And uh, I got down there and they sent me off to school and I reported into school. I graduated from the Law Enforcement Academy of the Navy, which is run by the New Jersey State Patrol. And they trained us for felony stops and when to shoot, don't shoot, all that. So, then I, all right, I graduated. So then I went down to Panama, back down to Panama. And uh, as soon as I got back, I was like the fifth military member in the security detachment. And they said, my boss said, uh, okay, I'm gonna introduce you to your, uh, to your team or to your watch. And I had like 10 civilian dudes working for me. But since I was military, I overruled them. So it was like, all right, you're in charge, dude. So I was like, okay. Well, my second in charge. So, anyway, his name was Scott Stamper. He's probably dead by now. I hope not. He's a hell of a guy. But the boss called him into the office, and it was like right at the beginning of their shift. I, I think at the time, we had rotating shifts, so at the time, I think he was. Uh, on the swing shift. So he called Scott Stamper in, introduced me to him and introduced him to me and said, uh, Petty Officer Hillebrand here is gonna be the new watch commander for, for your team or your watch. Now Scott, Scott's a retired E8 or E9, whatever, out of the Army. And here I am, a lowly E5 in the Navy. But I got a little bit more on the ball than the average bear. So we made pleasantries in front of the boss and everything. And, um, I worked that night. So they said, you want to adjust the troops? And I said, nope. I said, get them out. Get them out, post them up. I said, we'll talk either at the end of shift if nothing happens or <coughs> we'll talk during up brief tomorrow. He said, the main thing I want to do is I want to talk to you. I want to find out what, what the deal is. Because I'm like, here you got a retired E8 or 9 in the Army, and I'm active duty, and I'm being put in charge of you, and I'm an E5, and I have a lot of respect for my elders and shit. So it's like, I don't know, dude. So, Scott goes through the deal, goes through up brief. I'm just standing in the background. He introduces me to everybody. I introduce myself, tell him where I'm coming from, and yada, 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 yada. And then at the beginning of shift brief, um, well, towards the end, that's when they passed out vehicles. And there was like good vehicles, middle vehicles, shitty vehicles and the shittiest of all vehicles. Now I, I took notice of that right off the bat. When they started throwing out vehicle keys, 
God damn it, I had that piece of shit last night. Well, I, you know, mental note, I didn't say nothing. I'm just watching how shit works. So I lock it all away in the back of my head. Oh, Scott and I go out. And I'm like, uh, he's like, what vehicle do you want? I said, I don't care, I'm going to ride with you tonight. And I want you to take me out and show me everything. Okay, that sounds like a fair deal. So, he and I get out, and we're answering uh, follow-up calls, you know. One of your patrolmen gets a call, and then you kind of just swing by and make sure everything's going all right. If they call for a backup, then that's what we do. I mean, it's all good. So Scott and I hit it off really well. He's like, don't come in here thinking that you're going to be gangbusters. I said, yeah, I know the drill, dude. I said, this ain't my first day on the chicken ranch. Although it kind of is because I only got four years in the military and he's got like <coughs> 32 or something like that. So I understand his fears and I talk to him about all that shit and I'm like, it's cool, man. I said, I'm going to be counting on you to teach me. I said, I'm grabbing a hold of your shirt tails and I'm going to follow you around. And I expect you to teach me. I said, I didn't ask for this position. I was put in it. And I also told him, I said, I'm not being a pussy about it. I'm not being a chicken shit. That's just how it is. So, okay, let's see. This is probably 15 minutes now already. All right. So, all right. So, next couple days, finally, I, I decide to take my own cruiser out. I know my way around. I know where I'm going and shit. So, I take my own cruiser out and... Of course, right off the bat, they throw me the best one there is. So I'm out touring and checking up on, you know, checking up on my guys. And I'm finding them sitting around and I'm like, I pull up to them and I'm like, what are you doing? Huh? Just hanging out watching. And I was like, okay, that's fine. Oh, the other thing I forgot to mention is I have a brother that's a... Well, now he's retired. Omaha Police. And... I had been talking to him when I went through school. Because I already knew that I was going to be a watch commander and shit like that. And he was like, just don't be a friggin' asshole. That understand that being out in the cruiser, yeah, you're gonna. You can't drive the damn cruiser for eight hours. So, yeah, he, he made a really good impression on me on that. So, so I'd talk to him and I'd be like, I explained it to him. I'm like, I understand what you're going through. Um, here's the only thing I can suggest you do is don't sit in the same spot for like more than 15 minutes or somebody's going to call in and rag on you and they won't call me and rag on you they're going to call the uh, base commander and that's how you're going to get busted so da 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 So one of my uh, one of my guys, his name was Maje. He was uh, he's probably still alive, but he was an American, Panamanian, dual citizenship, ex-army stuff like that. And he talked like, "Hey man, what are you doing?" It's like Tony Montana, you know. So anyway, one day. 
here's the anaconda story. So one day he gets a he gets dispatched to the radio far fan, which is where my wife and kid live. One kid. Dispatched the radio far fan to an officer's house. Well, they call an officer house. I already I already know what they are. So I'm like, nope, gotta go. So I go heading out there and he's out there and it's uh it's an animal control call. Well I'm the only one with a snare. Because I'm the soup. Okay, Roger that. So I'm like five minutes behind him. I get out there and I get out of my cruiser, throw my PR24 in my belt. He's walking out to me, and I'm walking up to him, and I'm like, all right, what do you got? He said, man, you won't believe it. Biggest snake I ever seen. Anaconda. Nasty fucker. <laughs> I said, what? He said, yeah, anaconda. I said, is it poisonous? He said, uh, no, but if you let it get a hold of you, it will, it will kill you. It will crush you. I'm like, yeah, okay, Maje. All right, show me. I'm from Missouri, dude. Show me where this is at. So, sure shit, he takes me up into this carport, which is like a garage. It's like a two-story house. But underneath is the carport, under, like, the living room or whatever. So he takes me up there, and he says, it's right there. So I look at this fucking snake, and this son of a bitch is like six to eight feet long. And like, I grew up in the Midwest. I mean like, uh, yeah, I might have seen a four foot snake once in my life, but this thing's like huge. His head is like as big as my boot. So I kind of took a step towards it, see what it was going to do, you know, testing it. And the snake kind of slithers into the corner and then kind of raises its head up. So I'm like, okay, running it off is not an option. So Maje says, what do you want to do, man? I said, well, I got the snare in the trunk. I said, I'll just snare the fucker. He said, well, tell you what. I've got the shotgun. You snare the fucker. And I'll back you up with the shotgun. I said, you're from down here. You know. You know how to deal with these things. Oh, no, man. I, I'm not fucking with that. No, no. That, no. No, I'm not fucking with that. I said, all right. Now, this is where, you know, you got to roll into the kind of like the leadership skills and I'm new so I guess I have to uh, I'm thinking in my mind all right I have to show some leadership here so he backs off and at the same time I'm thinking in the back of my mind uh, this is a setup so I said all right so I open up my trunk I get my snare out it's one of them poles with the cord and you just draw it tight around the, with the loop and shit. So, so then I go into the, uh, into the, uh, the cab, into the compartment of the car and I pull the shotgun and I, I pulled the shotgun out and I said, you better not be shooting my ass, dude. I said, you make sure I'm good and clear. Otherwise, get the machete out of the trunk and start hacking on it. So he's like, yeah, okay, no problem, man, no problem. So I walk over with the snare. Got the big loop on the end of it. And the snake's like, yeah, what are you going to do with that? So I'm thinking, yeah, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with that. I'm like, Maje, move over here to the right and drag his attention. That way I can just drop the loop over him. <clears throat> so 
so Maje does, and the snake doesn't pay no attention to him. I said, Maje, you got to do something, man. You got to move, or you you got to you got to rattle his cage a little bit somehow. So Maje tries that. And the snake looks over towards him. And boom! I go to throw the noose on him and. The snake stands up about four feet tall, like a like a cobra, you know. And he hisses at me with a, and I jump back about three feet. <coughs> and I looked at Maje and I said, "I thought you said these things won't bite." He said, "No, it won't bite you, man, but it'll crush you." I said, what the hell was that? The thing just stood up. Ah, don't worry. It got no teeth. Just don't let it get a hold of you. <laughs> I'm like, all right. All right, dude. So, I end up snaring the thing. I get the loop around its neck. Rank on the cord. Tightens up around his neck. And immediately the anaconda wraps its ass, all eight feet of it, around like uh, the size of a broomstick. Just coils up on it and starts crushing the broomstick. And I'm like, oh, okay, this is cool. I can deal with that. So then Maugé's like, okay, good, you got it. What are you going to do with it now? You gonna take it across the street? I said, there's a playground across the street. I'm not gonna turn it loose across the street. So I'm thinking, you know, I'm thinking, what am I gonna do with this son of a bitch? Well, first thing I gotta do is get it away from the officer wife's house. Get, get our ass cleared up. Okay, so, I said, uh, I wanna put it in the trunk. He said, you, you what? I said, yeah, I'm gonna put it in the trunk. And then we'll take it, uh, we'll take it somewhere and turn it loose. I'm not killing the goddamn thing. Thing was up there chasing cats or rats or mice or whatever, you know, I, I got no problem with that. It wasn't like it was set up and waiting for a human to show up and gonna eat them. So, okay, so we do that, and I go to throw it in the trunk. It takes two of us to lift it up. This thing probably weighed about 40, 50 pounds, but I'm not getting up close to it. Maje ain't getting up close to it. So finally, I said, all right, I'll get up close to it. So I threw my gloves on. So yeah, here we go. So I throw it in the trunk. Well, the pole is too long to shut the trunk on. So I'm like, well, I can't just drive down the road with the trunk open. It'll break the shaft, and then what am I going to do? What are you going to do now? What are you going to do now? And I say, well, I'm going to put it in the floorboard of the passenger seat. Ah, oh, you, you, you crazy, man. No, I'm not crazy. So it's got the thing... Got his neck tied up. He ain't gonna do nothing. What's he gonna do? He gonna try and bite me? He ain't poisonous. So I threw him in the floorboard of the truck. I mean the car. The cruiser. Well, where are we gonna drop him? Where are we gonna drop him? Well, I sort of had a half-ass idea on that because we'd had some break-ins up at our uh, radio antenna site and uh, so I thought well we'll take it up there and turn it loose up there so we took it up on top of San Juan Hill that was the name of it where the antenna site was and I turned it loose up there and uh, 
totally amazing we didn't have no more break-ins so that's my anaconda story very abbreviated it's like a 30 minute story to get it right probably 45 minute story to get it right because I'm sure I've already burned up 30 minutes of talking 